dark save for light being cast from the big tv screen and the imminent sunrise that's teasing the one starry sky with whispers of morning hey george i hate you so much right now that's fair um yeah. so i want to jump right into uh what we played was a game for the playstation called azure dreams and the reason i want to jump right into that is because then i get to tell uh the story about how we were discussing earlier that as adults, this name sounds a lot like a strain of marijuana you would get in like a head shop. Yep. And the more I thought about that, the more I was like, some of the visuals also kind of lend themselves to like tripping out with like the zany backgrounds and stuff. So mm-hmm. like, I'm pretty confident, you know, I live in a state where marijuana is legal. I'm pretty confident mm-hmm. that I could find a pot shop that would sell me Azure Dreams. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty confident. You play Azure Dreams while on Azure Dreams, and given <laughs> some of the other, like struggles that this had, right? You know, like because there's there's a whole bunch of stuff that we're gonna get into. But um, is I'm wondering that if you were high on Azure Dreams, if it would be like the refocusing lens, you know? So like all of like the weird edges that it had would just be perfect, you know? Like. <laughs> Like it would be the 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 decoder to like the, the game's been encoded and the only way to decode it <laughs> is to by be being on Azure Dreams. On Azure Dreams, yeah. I, I mean, if that was the case, like I, I think we should stress test this. Like the next time I'm in Colorado, right? Like we should just do that and then kind of be like, does it did it work? Yeah. Well, we're gonna and, wake up in New Mexico and, and just be like, did it? Did we do it? <laughs> did we Azure I, Dreams? I guess the question is, would you expect it to be like salt, where it's like a flavor enhancer? So, like, if someone loved this game and then they were on Azure Dreams, would they love it even more? And if someone didn't like it, would that move them up to, like, being ambivalent about it? Or is it is it like a like a diametric thing where it's like, oh, if you love this game and then you are on Azure, now, you you know what I mean? Yeah, I think what I'm saying is we're going to have to do a lot of tests. Yeah, so much. So many (laughs) tests. No, I think I like for me is it's it's. I think that that the way I'm envisioning it is that it's realigning. So like if you like Azure Dreams already, your mind is already fragmented to the point where like this game is, is, you know, like, like makes sense in its current form. If not, then you know what it is, is it's either it's, it's this, it's like Aqua Teen Hunger Force, right? We're like, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, okay. I'm with you. Right. Right. You know, because that's the thing is that like Aqua Teen Hunger Force, like we would enjoy it. Right. But like, you had if you were in an altered state, either drunk or you know probably high or exhausted, like that's what brought it into that. But there were some people that we knew that found it funny all the time. But those people, even when they weren't drunk or high, kind of always seemed a little bit like they were drunk or high, you know. So it's that. That's the one thing. Azure Dreams is the Aqua Teen Hunger Force of JRPGs. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure, and and you know this, but I want to make yeah. sure our listeners know that we are good scientists. And oh, yeah. So uh, we will have an oregano control group that that w- <laughs> that won't know they're on the placebo as your dreams. Yes, exactly. Of of, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, June thirtieth, nineteen ninety eight, is when this game came out. Um, which is it. I'm I'm always I know this is like a stupid thing, but I always think it's interesting when I'm like, oh, we're releasing this episode right near like an anniversary of when this. Mm. It was released, you know, so it's like we're off by like a week and a half. But, you know, it's like a fun coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's which is like like Joe incidents with a J. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, so I uh, I think your nostalgia goggles experience for this one is going to be pretty concise. Um, this is a game I played uh, with one of my childhood friends. Um, I remember it very fondly. And part of what was interesting about this game to me and like why I really wanted to go back and play it eventually was I didn't understand at the time that this game is sort of like ActRaiser where it's got disparate mechanics that don't necessarily go together, but then they're made to play off of and sort of feed into each other because like ActRaiser has the platforming action segment 
and the city builder segment, but you get more powerful by doing the city building. So the platforming segments are easier if you worked harder on the city building segment, right? This game is more more mechanics, but they're all also fairly shallow, and then it's about kind of how they play into each other. Uh, so I definitely didn't get that as a kid. And also, um, I'm pretty confident I didn't know what a roguelite was, you know, when I was like a teenager. So the fact that this game is also a roguelite was completely lost on me. And, uh, you know, now coming back to it as an adult, I'm like, oh, like I have the vocabulary to describe this mess now. Neat. Yes. Um, so, yeah, no, I mean, I, I did not uh, obviously have any nostalgic goggles experience for this game because I, I was on the right side of the console wars. Um as history has clearly borne out. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, is, is I, I, the nostalgia experience that I kind of have for this, which is, is weird is that this game made me, and I'll, I'll speak to this more like when we're actually doing our analysis is um, this game reminded me of like the protozoic portion of like five different games. I liked when I was a kid, you know, so because it, it has a lot of different, as you said, disparate mechanics. So I would be playing it and I'd be like, man, I, 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 I really want to go back and play The Sims. Man, <laughs> I really want to go back and play, you know, Rogue Legacy. Man, I really want to go play any of the games that like took one of the things and then did it really well. Yeah, d- deep <laughs> on fewer things yeah. instead of shallow on a bunch of things exactly yeah. so uh so so that that was kind of like the weird part for me of the nostalgia experience was um <laughs> it it would it, it, it's kind of like you know eating um eating you know, cake with like uh, uh cucumbers in it and you're just kind of like man i miss cucumbers and hummus and delicious birthday cake like my mom used to make <laughs> but i'm eating cucumber cake <laughs> But this is neither of those things. Yeah, this is neither of those things. But it's making me think fondly about both of those things. Now that it's uh, shill o'clock, and we're trying to make this a bit more of a, a concise shill o'clock so that we can get to our amazing patrons, um, you know, give us uh, feedback on the feedback form or on Twitter. Uh, links to those are actually in the show notes, and they've always been, even though we joke about nothing being in the show notes. Um, <laughs> there's also a game list on the website. If you want to see uh, what is kind of like coming up for the next cycle, you can get in on that. Uh, come watch me on Twitch. I play these games uh, often accompanied by a lot of swearing. Um, if you want to do something nice for us, you can leave us a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts, or you can just recommend the show to someone. Uh, and if you really want to go above and beyond, uh, we do have a Patreon, and you can support us on Patreon. Uh, all levels of our supporters get access to the after show that we now do. Um, so Mm -hmm. if you want more of this mess, uh, you can get more show for as little as $1. Um, but if you show up and you pay at the eight bit classic or 16 bit hero support levels, then we shout you out. And our eight bit classics are Kevin Stomper of the bombs, John eater of mushrooms and Yardo shooter of the green turtle shell. And our 16-bit heroes, Michael. Slinger of the Red Turtle Shell. David. Wielder of the Lightning Bolt. And Jacob. Holder of the Blue Shell. <laughs> yeah. Jacob's the one you got to watch. Yeah, man. He's, he's the one that's going to make you break your controller. <laughs> All right. I suppose we should talk about the visuals for Azure Dreams now. We should. Uh, game, it, it, it had some vis- visuals. Um, <laughs> Look, man, I could sit here and talk about the visuals for the sake of visuals, but here's the thing, is that I I, I don't know what the environments look like because the avatar took up 95% of the screen. You are <laughs> so big. You take up <laughs> so much of the screen, and it's so needless. No, so um, we can talk about the actual visuals. I know I'm going to feel <laughs> right off the bat, but... Like, I paused the game to turn and whine to Megan about this, which was the fact that the town is bananas huge. It's enormous, right? Because there's a bunch of shit you're supposed to put in it, right? You know, you're supposed to build stuff. Fine. I'm, I'm in. I'm game. Let's, let's build this town, right? There's no, like, mini map, right? To say, like, where everything is in the town. Yeah, which is and- weird because you do get a map in the tower, 
Right. Which is, you know, you get a map in the tower, which is procedurally generated. So kind of part of the point is that you're kind of exploring the unknown. But for that, you have a map. But for the town, you obviously don't uh, for whatever reason. But so so but the thing is that, like, because the, the camera is so zoomed in on you, you can't like see anything in the town. It is so difficult to navigate the town because you literally have to move 15 screens worth before all before you traverse the town. Whereas in a game like uh, Link to the Past or uh, Swords of Ditto, which is a, link, a roguelike Link to the Past, um, anything like that, your the camera is pulled far enough away from you that you're maybe three screens away from traversing any one area. So if you're trying to explore an area, you don't have to explore very far before you can find the thing that you're looking for and start heading towards it. In this area, it was like trying to find my way home using a magnifying glass, and I'm also I'm in Canada. So, <laughs> so uh, I was going to talk about the camera uh, later in my visual notes, but uh, <laughs> y- you have touched on something that I found to be more of a problem in the tower because in the village, I just started mentally mapping out like, okay, the restaurant is to the east of my house, right? The the theater is, I, I put that down to the Southwest, right? And I just, because it's a grid, I essentially just started to like commit that to memory, which admittedly is not like a, oh, pshaw, you're complaining about nothing. Like, but that was just my workaround. Mm -hmm. The thing that I'm realizing I suffered from in the tower, but is equally true in the town is so you can rotate the camera and we're going to talk about the controls later, but some of the, the controls are um, not immediately intuitive or easily discoverable because they're like weird button combinations. And one of the things you can do with the camera that is so obscure, I literally forgot about it, is you can angle the camera. I didn't know that you could do that. Yeah, I didn't either. Right? Like this this had to be <laughs> reminded upon me when I was because I was curious. I was like, oh, I wonder what a speed run of this game looks like. And because in the tower, if you have the camera down at a sharp angle, now you can see where monsters are like off in the distance. Right. Mm. And so you could do the same kind of thing in town where you could now see everything that's like kind of up and behind you. And since you can freely rotate the camera up and behind you can be any direction. But I was 99% of the way through all of the time that I was going to have to play when I watched this speed run. And so I was like, I, I could have been doing that the whole time. I could have been doing that the whole time. Like, I, ah. and so I, I thought of it in terms of like, how would that change how I behaved in the tower where all the combat happens? But yeah, if you're trying to navigate the town, it'd be nice to see what the hell you were looking at too. Yep. And when, and you know, to your point, you committed it all to memory, right? Um, I mean, literally I, I had to use GPS to get to work for the first three months that I worked there. Like my <laughs> spatial reasoning is just the hottest of garbage. Right. So, so I mean, like, again, affordances, right. I never considered myself to be a disabled player, but this is apparently one of those blind spots where I could have used an affordance. Um, and, and, and again, like I, I just, I didn't really understand why, you know, um, why you took up, a bajillion T portions of the screen. I don't know. Um, but it was something that, that I just, I, I had to get off my chest immediately. So visuals for the sake of visuals. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're fine. They're, um, I, for me personally, they, they were nothing wild to write home about. It's, it's, you know, faux 3d, right. It's, it's what it's called. It's billboarding, right? Yeah. Um, it, all the characters are 2d sprites. So they're all billboarding. Um, some of the monsters are actually 3d models, but I, I think some of them are not all the environments are 3d models. So, I mean, it's a mix. It's, it's very of its time where they were like, ah, crap, the PlayStation's better at pixel art than it is at polygon. So we're going to use pixel art a lot. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, and and that, that in and of itself, I'm, I'm fine with, I didn't really have any notes there. Um, you know, the dungeon, I mean, like it's all it's all fine. Um, that one of the things that they do visuals for the sake of visuals that I, I really fi- always find enjoyable and immersive, immersive and was mind blowing for the time is that your equipment, the equipment that you equip is actually reflected by what you're holding. You know, yeah, the, the wood shield looks like wood, the diamond shields yeah. all blue. Yeah. So, I mean like that was, 
revolutionary at the time because i remember you know playing rpgs and, and whatnot you know when i was younger and you know you equipped the you know azure shield of of pottery or whatever right and and <laughs> that, and that looks, was your randomly generated example yeah <laughs> yeah you want you 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 want me to go for another one <laughs> just keep hitting like <laughs> randomly generate that's going to be the after show is just like me randomly generating yeah, just a series of, of insane mundane items a person would use as a weapon <laughs> but uh but yeah so you're, you know, your your plus 10 you know bulwark shield of faithfulness was the same as your you know wood two by four that you found in the back you know um uh so yeah so i mean like like the the fact that it actually looked different you know made you feel like yes i am involved and invested in this rpg but other than that honestly there was nothing that about the visuals that i was like you know super excited about so i really like the character portraits i love how detailed and over the top they are but here's the thing if i'm being honest i have to be clear on uh what I, I love that you call visuals for the sake of visuals versus my feeling about the art itself, which is I really like that when you're talking to basically a character you can date or that is like story important, they get a big character portrait. Most people have multiple character portraits, so they like they have a happy face and a sad face and a confused face, right? Like a, a handful of different ones. Um and that that just, you know, with small, well, massive in some circumstances, but with, you know, small character sprites, it's it's nice to see that like big artwork and it's kind of a continuation of what they were doing toward the end of like the Super Nintendo era. So it feels like, oh, look at all these pixels we have. We can make like bigger, flashier RPGs. That all being said, I don't love the execution of the art style itself on a lot of the character designs because they essentially feel like what you would get if you described anime to someone who had never seen it right because it's like okay so what what do you want the characters to look like well i want them to be like you know kind of like stylized comic booky sort of characters but you know like anime characters oh i've, I've never i've actually never seen any anime okay Big hair, big eyes, weird clothes that make no damn sense. Like, just imagine no sense of uniformity in the way people dress. Like, there's no obvious culture for this incredibly insular, homogenous group of people. Somehow, they have not settled onto, like, clothing. And and that's fine if then someone with, like, good art direction goes and takes care of that. But these characters all look just a little off, like just a little bit uncanny. Like the irises are a little too big. The hairstyles are a little too insane. The clothing is a little too meaningless. Like it's just, I I don't know. Like I just, but it's all like well executed, right? Like if you asked for this, then you got it. (laughs) But it's just, it's just, (laughs) I don't know. Something about it just hits my eye wrong. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that, that didn't, hit me in that way but i think you're kind of uh hitting on the 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 theme to me for the visuals which is that and and kind of i mean the the game as a whole which is that it's just they're not special you know (laughs) right like they're 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 just there's it's like oh yeah you know like what are the visuals like for this game it's like well you know there's monsters they look like monsters you know the uh, various shapes and sizes and designs you know um the people they look like anime people you know they they look distinctive enough but the minute that um i stopped thinking about them i stopped thinking about them forever you know um yeah it it just uh i feel that this this game was kind of like the uh, well to a degree like the sims but in in a way like you know what what was it you know second life where it's it's like you can do anything in the game and it's like you can but but there's a limited amount of money for any project. So when somebody said, you know, hey, I need to, you know, I, I want to make like a, a procedurally generated dungeon. I mean, at the time, like people was people said, though, a what? You know, and then it's like, OK, cool. We got that down. It's like, oh, and it has to have this part and this part and this part. And it has to have anime characters. and It has to have like fully drawn art portraits. And it has to have these different character models. It has to have this. It's like, 
I don't know, man. I'm just going to like literally the, the, the character models look like somebody made it's somebody's first pass, you know, like nobody, uh, <laughs> it looks like, uh, um, Oh, what's his name? Um, the, the dog from itchy and scratchy Poochie. Poochie. It looks like <laughs> the first pass that they made of Poochie. But before you know? they, Be- uh, cool Rastafy him. him. Yeah. Before they Rastafy him by about 15%. Um, yeah. Uh, um, the, uh, you, you, you run so fast in this game. I know that that sounds like a mechanical <laughs> note, but since I, I dumped it in the visuals in the last one, I kind of dump it in the visuals here, which is to say that, cause the reason why I, I look at it in terms of visuals is, and this kind of goes back to what we were talking in the pre-show is it's all relative, right? You're not moving quickly. It's just that the world is moving fast around you, right? So it's, it's how much time does it take for you to clear to the edge of the screen and I remember during the tutorial, which we'll get to, um, <laughs> it said, you know, hey, like, because I'm, I'm walking around. I'm totally OK with the pace that I'm walking at. It's like, and you can hit circle to move faster. Wow. I mean, just. <laughs> I get that, that there may because of the way it's procedurally generated and the way the exploration works, there may be times when you would need to backtrack and you would want to backtrack quickly man, I do not know why they made you move that fast. That seems, that seems excessive. It's when you are backtracking through a slogging part, it is kind of nice because, and and this is without talking too much about the mechanics. um, When you are in the tower, which is where you really go into maximum overdrive. um, Technically time is only moving when you are taking an action. And Mm -hmm. so, you're never running what you're doing is taking turns at like a million miles an hour right right it, it's like if you were playing like a, a civilization game and you just like mashed next turn as fast as you possibly could and it's like oh my god hundreds of years are passing right for for, for me it was if it, it would be like when you <laughs> if you said okay we're going into rounds the night passes uneventfully <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah. like recorded in rounds. So it's just kind of like six seconds, you know? Yeah. But then when you're in town, you move normally. You can jump, you can hold, to, you can move, you know, normally with the, the D pad or you can run. And it's not just speeding up time. It's actually your character running. The whole world doesn't move faster. So I, I think it's almost weird that they were like, well, when you're in town, you got to move normally. But when you're in the tower, you're kind of always in combat. So the combat rules just apply a hundred percent of the time in the tower and they apply 0% of the time when you're in the town. So yeah, the, the run, I mean, it's disorienting, like how yeah. fast you move. And the thing is, if you, sometimes go blazing into a room you may step on a trap right because traps still trigger when you're moving at full speed but you don't pick up items when you're moving at full speed so it's like and you can like go you know barrel assing into a monster or a bunch of monsters like it, it's there's a lot of risk in moving that fast but it's so like uh insensitive where it's like mm-hmm. you're either moving at your slow speed or you know <laughs> plaid <laughs> there's yeah. like no there's no third gear this ludicrous speed. It makes me think of this as slightly tangential, but um, back when I was a, but a wee dungeon master, you know, of the of the age of fifteen, right? And I was playing with friends. This was before we we all came to the collective realization that Dungeons and Dragons is collaborative storytelling and not about making the numbers go higher. Because unlike in in a video game or an RPG like this, where you actually have to play the game to make the numbers go higher, you can just make the numbers go higher whenever you want the numbers to go higher, right? So what's the point? Um. This was before that. So uh, I was drawing a dungeon out on a map. And so they were like, we open the door and I say like, okay. And then um, one of my friends took his D4, which represented him and just plopped him in the middle of the room. I hadn't drawn yet. <laughs> and then um, because he wanted to get to search the room first, because then he would get first shot at the loot. And so then the other friend, not to be outdone also plopped their D4 in the middle of the room. And I said, all right, all right everybody who's in the room make a reflex save and they said against what and i said you don't know you just went barreling into a room that i hadn't (laughs) even drawn yet you clearly your characters could not have looked at the room the room is barely in existence in the universe (laughs) and they were like and and so i made them make a reflex save and a constitution save and then i and then they said well what what was it against and i said don't worry about it 
And then I would just make them make constitution saves at whatever frequency I wanted to, just to, you know, keep them at a sense of disease. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it feels like <laughs> this is the video game version of that, which is that you can very easily go barreling into a room that you have no idea what's in there. Uh, and then all of a sudden realize, wow, I'm a, uh, I'm pretty wildly screwed. This yeah. was and, uh, not the call. They try again, not to go too hard in the mechanics, but like, they try to account for this in a way that I wish they'd gone harder on, which is if you get within a certain distance of a monster, you cannot continue running. What you can continue doing is walking at normal speed. And every step you take at normal speed is one action, which advances time inside the tower by one action for everything inside the tower. So What I wish they had done is when you are running at full speed, as soon as you come into like, I think it's like six squares or something of a monster that it stopped you, even Mm. if you're still pressing on the D pad, that it actually just brought you to a full halt. So then you could assess the situation because (laughs) when when we say like in, in uh, our real monsters, we talked about like how fast you move and there's been other games where we're like, Oh my God, like you move so fast, so hard to process information. This is not that this is, you could not possibly react fast enough. Correct. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's that fast. So to reduce you from impossible to react speed instantly to, okay, but things are still happening. Speed is like a concession, yeah. <laughs> but it's not enough. Like they really should have brought you to a full halt because you're moving <laughs> that fast. Yeah. Uh, it, it makes me think of Futurama where, you know, and I'm going to butcher this quote, but where, you know, Leela is piloting the ship and the ship goes, warning, out of fuel. And she goes, that's not a warning. A warning supposed to happen before the bad thing happens. Warning, the ship will crash in two seconds. See, that's better. You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like that, right? Where it's just kind of like, I imagine that before people were going barreling directly in the monsters and they were like, well, we got to make this better. We'll give them like a two second heads up while they're, you know, running all over the place. Um, So... The one other thing that, that I've got some other like throwaway notes, but the one other thing I wanted to make sure I touched about was for me personally, the HUD was not intuitive. No. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't like, I was sitting there because the tutorial is the tutorial for this game. So it doesn't help, but uh, yeah, you know, like I, I was, I was kind of staring at it and I'm like, okay, I get, okay. So I get the one F first floor that, that makes sense. There's then so, your so far so good. Yeah, there's then your level, which is kind of marked off by like an an LV, but it's kind of difficult to see. But you can kind of get that. So I'm like, all right. And then thirty three slash max zero five, like like zero fifty or whatever. I'm like, and the, the problem is that as you said, as you move, time passes, which means as you move, you get hit points back. But let's just say that you were hypothetically barreling through the tutorial because you mistakenly thought that the game would teach you stuff through gameplay, right? You don't know what that is, you know, you got to pay really close attention. And then there's also kind of like a life meter below and all of that's not very intuitive, right? The the thing that broke me though, is why is your gold amount on the HUD? Like, why is that information I have to have quick perpetual access to in the dungeon where I can't spend money? Um... As opposed to maybe like my, my pets or whatever, you know, like, I don't think you would need it all the time, but speculating wildly, they had that corner, which, oh, by the way, you can move the HUD and make it vertical instead of horizontal. Another thing they do not teach you. Sure. Um, (laughs) <laughs> and I mean, it, it's not, whatever <laughs> and it has slightly different information in it when it's vertical instead of horizontal it, yeah. <laughs> so yeah so if you felt bad about the hud you didn't even know to feel worse right? oh my god so okay yeah, that's, my that's fine. My, my rampant speculation would be you need monies to grow the town and so the exchange for goods and services yes so if you are trying to get to a certain amount of monies or you are right about to die, the monies might, because you lose your monies, it's a roguelite, right? So if yeah. you die in the tower, you lose everything you were carrying, including all your money. So maybe it's there as like a, hey, remember that if you die, you're, this is how much you're going to lose, plus any items you're carrying. 
um, which is not great, but I mean, m- maybe that's what they were thinking. Like, oh, we have this small amount of space and this is like a kind of a reminder of what's at stake if they, yeah. if they fail. Um, so you said like, oh, well, what if there was a HUD for like your familiar that's like following you around? There is. It's behind a button press. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you hold down the shoulder buttons, because you can eventually have two familiars following you all the time. If you hold down L2 or R2, it shows a HUD for that familiar and lets you do quick directions where you can give them specific actions. Again, none of which is explained in the tutorial. So wait, wait, wait. So just just for the record, just for the record, because the, the familiar is like the thing that's keeping you alive right i mean Un- until you have truly banging equipment in the very yeah. late game yes you're familiar essentially does all the work right 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 it, this is this is pokemon but sometimes ash gets a wooden stick and beats the other pokemon too yes yeah yeah which i um, think would have made pokemon way <laughs> different <laughs> if the trainers got involved yeah pokemon uh, gotta beat them all, all. <laughs> Oh, it's you and me. I know it's my destiny. (laughs) Um, So, but what, okay. So the thing that is keeping you alive, right? That's hidden behind the button press, but the gold's not. So the resultant of the pipeline of, because like arguably then if we're being purely Machiavellian, (laughs) the, the Pokemon is the pipeline for the gold, right? So like they facilitate getting gold and the more hp and mana and all that kind of stuff that they have the more gold you can get to then upgrade the town right so yeah yeah so i it would be more concerned over the pipelines integrity than the resultants right i would rather press a button and then have it pull up how much gold i've made so far because that's not a decision i need to make on the, on the fly like when i see a monster I'm like, oh man, do I want to engage that or do I want to run? Like, I would like to always know the current health and position of my familiar as opposed to, and you know, but then when I'm out of combat, I've beaten the monster. I've done whatever it is I'm going to do to just quickly check on my gold. That's just me, my own personal opinion. I'm absolutely correct. But so, that's so just here, here, here's the thing. If this was a, if, if this game was designed mechanically identically, but on a 16 by nine canvas, I guarantee you their information would be on screen all the time because they would have the real estate to do it right on, on this lower density and smaller dimensions screen. They just, they don't have the space because then even more of the floor and the threats and the monsters that are coming to murder you would be obscured. All of that being said, I don't, think it would actually be worth at this size canvas having the monsters information on the screen all the time because if the monster dies you go oh no and then you open your menu and use a wind crystal and you escape the tower if you die you lose everything so knowing how close you are to death is arguably more important than knowing how close your monster is to death because If your monster dies, you are instantly in a near panic inducing failure state, but you haven't failed. You're in you're on the failure spectrum. If you die, then you failed. You lose all your gold. You lose everything. So maximizing for Ash's health seems weird instead of Pikachu's health. But given what's at stake, I guess it's probably the better choice. Oh, agreed. No, I, I but but what I don't think needs to be on the HUD is um like if we're if we're saying real estate, I don't think gold needs to be on there. Yeah, pro- I don't, probably not. Yeah, um, you could even make the argument that the floor doesn't need to be on there because that doesn't it's not that dynamic of information, right? You know, so it's like I you can tell me what floor I'm on when I get to that floor, and again, you can tell me it when I access my menu if I need to have that information, but it's not something I need to be aware of all the time. Um, so, and, and if we're, if we're going like, no, we got to cut deeper, we got to cut deeper into the budget. I would even make the argument that your level isn't something that you need to know all the time. The thing that you need to know is your hit points, which I agree completely. You need to know your hit points. Then, so for me, I, I agree. It's first your HP, then your familiar's HP, then kind of everything else, you know? Yeah. And, and you could, 
one might argue that they're saying like, well, but knowing what floor you're on, because the floor you're on is also always the exact level of the monsters on that floor. 10th level monsters appear exclusively on the 10th floor. There may be some randomness, but I don't think so. Um, And so you might want to track your level versus the floor level. So, you know, approximately I am going to be encountering 10th level monsters and I am 10th level. And I know that I'm going to be encountering 10th level monsters because I'm on the 10th floor. But again, none of that is explained to you. So, For me to even speculate that that emergent connection would be valuable would require the player to have all of the pieces of information that I am speculatively linking together, which the player is not guaranteed to have. Right. Yeah, no, I (laughs) agreed. And for me personally, I think that, um, and this is just something I'm kind of like coming to as we're talking, but like, is that the main, the main thing is you want on, on a HUD is rapidly dynamic information you know like information that is likely to change moment to moment so that way you don't have to access a menu or anything like that so if uh you know if when you level up it's like hey you leveled up then you know you don't press the button double check be like i'm on floor 10 i am now level 10 i should be good even even if you had just a very very small icon that either had like a green up arrow uh you know a, a yellow dash line and then a red down arrow that oh said, like, yeah you like are, a, a am i greater than or equal to the floor or the monsters right. on this floor yeah because the, the math that you're you're chugging we got computers to do that for us man i don't, I don't <laughs> math <laughs> but anyways that was the the I, i've got a couple of other throwaway notes but any any other big things you want to hit um, I, I did want to mention, uh, because I kind of talked about, like you mentioned billboarding. Um, I like the HD pixels kind of thing that came into life at this time in history, because I don't have a very high fondness for low poly. Like I've played a lot of low poly games that I love and I will play again. But when I go back to an old game and I'm like, Oh, thank God. They just, they just drew sprites. <laughs> Like yep. that, that to me just ages so much better. So the fact that they optimize for pixels over polygons, I, I think was a, a good choice. Even if I don't personally love some of the artistic direction, um, I think pixels over polygons. Good. Um, the other thing I want to shout out because this is going to come up again, similar in audio is the visuals in this game are extremely samey for like the first 50% to two thirds of the game. And here's what I mean by that. The tower is a rogue light. So the floors are randomly generated, the treasure that's on each floor, the monsters that are on each floor, but within parameters. And one of the parameters that's fixed is the like theming. So like, Oh, the first 10 floors have this tile layout, this background color, and you know, this range of monsters can show up. And then the next 10 floors and it it goes up to 40 and I think it, it changes. I don't think it's every 10. I think it changes on a weird interval. Like every, is it five? I think it's five, but yeah. But but it, it, it changes by the end. You go through like the whole, you know, panoply of Mario levels. It's underwater themed, forest themed, volcano themed, right? Like you eventually see a huge variety of environments and of monster designs, but it's roguelite. So every time you enter the tower, you enter on floor one. So that means you see that layout a billion times. You see the early monsters a billion times. And if you are struggling to advance, if you're struggling to understand the mechanics, if you're doing anything that is slowing your progress, then you're going to see those early floors even more times. So the game actually has tremendous variety in monster design and uh, like the layout theme, I guess theming of the, the different floors, like kind of by section, but you don't get to enjoy that for like the first 50% of your playthrough, which is unfortunate because if someone was like, you know, Oh yeah, I, I gave that game a try. I played for, you know, I played it for a minute, but you know, it's just the same thing over and over. And it's like, I can't argue with that because yes, from your point of view, it was the exact same thing over and over, but just around the river bend, there's all this variety, but Oh, by the way, you got to really work hard to get to all that variety. So it's like, eh, like why did you put in all of this thoughtful, like art direction? And then 
some of your players will never see it. And, and it's interesting. Um, uh, two things. One is that uh, I, I saw a video, I forget who did it, but they were basically saying like one of the reasons why um, the ending to a lot of video games, like especially like 40 hour experiences always seems kind of phoned in is because it's the very last thing developed, not because it's the ending, but because it's the least important because the smallest percentage of your player base will actually see it, you know, so they're like, right. <laughs> Isn't that like kind of a weird, but it's just like, yeah, they just tack the ending on because they're so worried about the stuff that 90% of the people are going to see that the end of a story, the, like the story to mass effect, right. Where it's, it's like, yeah, but, not a lot of people are going to see that they're going to see all of these other stages and these events and the multiplayer and all that kind of stuff. Um, so there's that, which is interesting. And you raise an, an interesting point because one could make that argument about a lot about any roguelite or roguelike. Right. Um, but it, I agree with you that it is worse than this one because the, this, the concept is the same for like uh, enter the gungeon, but it didn't bother me in enter the gungeon. And I think that the reason why is, um, and we'll get, we can get more into it into gameplay, but is because this one is turn-based combat. It's inherently longer, you know. It's longer. It's slower. You have more yeah. time to drink in the visuals, whereas Gungeon crap happening constantly, and yeah, so- the the layout of the rooms is like four walls and the tile floor, right? So it's not like oh, while you, when you take a second to drink in the rich visuals, like it's this super interesting, you're walking on a Star Wars, a George Lucas walkway with no railing that's just <laughs> floating in multicolored space. So, you know, I mean, it's fine. Like it's, it's even an interesting visual, but when you're staring at it and staring at it, staring at it, staring at it, then yeah. Yeah, it's, which is interesting. I, just, I, I hadn't thought about that. Um. The, the the throwaway notes that I have uh, is um, one. Uh, I, I get it. I get that your familiars are also monsters. I think it is dumb as hell to make them both red dots on the map. Like I get it, <laughs> and, and they even call that out. They're they like, do. but I'm a monster, so I'll also appear as a red dot. Yeah, and it's like I mean, I I get it. Like you, logically, that makes sense. But I'm also in the middle of a tower, hovering in the no, nothing nothingness of space. Like, do we need? hard logic on the the well and you know why they do this right Hmm. because there are traps that separate you from your monster and it is far more panic inducing when you see several red dots on the map and one of them may be your friend and the others might not i'm not saying that that's a good mechanic but that's why they do it dumb (laughs) (laughs) uh anyways disagree zero stars on yelp would not recommend um so uh to um the angel that that introduces you to all of this is l- l- like nightmare fuel <laughs> like, wh- why why like i would i would pay money to have somebody go into my head and rip that memory out total recall style and replace it with a low poly version of anything in the world <laughs> but <laughs> that any, angel. any anything would be fine yeah um so thank you for reminding me about the opening because i actually forgot to write this in my notes so um did you recognize what this opening is literally shot for shot uh did um do 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 what no yeah it's the opening to act razor yeah, yeah, yeah. actor right? thank you i was i was just blanking on the name but i was like i know the yeah. tune so so it's so the opening to act razor that when I first uh, booted the game up to make sure everything was working, I was like, oh, huh. It, this is this is kind of how ActRaiser starts with like an angel talking to you, telling you like, hey, you're going to go down to Earth. I was like, yeah, I bet a lot of Japanese games start like that, you know, kind of spiritual, like you're a spirit and you're like, now you're going to go and like live your life. Right? That That's but I mean, it's an angel like in the clouds. Like that's a kind of a weird coincidence. But then it also does the straight down mode seven spinning like into the top of your house, just like it into the levels in ActRaiser. It does the thing where it's like straight down camera spinning. And I was just like, okay, this is the opening to ActRaiser. Like someone really liked ActRaiser, which is fair. It's a great game. Someone really liked ActRaiser and was just like, that's that's how we're going to start our game. (laughs) 
Well, especially because this game has a lot of similarities to Act Racer, I imagine them be like to me. It's it's kind of if you watch the Steven Universe mu- movie, there's kind of the intro scene to it. And um, I remember either I turned to Megan or Megan turned to me, and we said, "Like, man, this opening is a lot like a Disney movie." And then it opens to like the storybook opening up, like in Cinderella or in a in a, a Sleeping Beauty or something like that. And I was like, "Oh no, they they they're in on the joke." Yeah, um, and and that's very possible. Maybe it is an intentional homage because they never talk about any of that again. Like you never see the angel, right? You never yeah. go back to any of that. W- one other example I have of this. So um, a game that we should play at some point, Guacamelee, uh, re- really great, interesting, fun game. But at one point, like you get a ability that allows you to like uppercut in the air and they want you to go through a thing where you jump in the air uppercut in the air and then like side dash in the air and then plummet straight down and you have to do that a couple of times consecutively like through like these very narrow air areas and megan said man this is just like celeste you know (laughs) and i was like this is a lot like celeste and right as i said that spray painted in the background was a strawberry and like oh no they 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 know what they're doing like like it's, it's okay now they're in on it you know um so uh so that that was a thing. Um, so yeah, the, the angel. Oh my god. Um, and then finally, and this is probably one of, if not the most juvenile note that I have ever had on the show. Okay, I'm if ready you, for it. Yeah, if you turn your character model sideways, because there's an idle animation, right? You know, he's just hanging out doing his thing. I just he is. There is no version. There is an infinite number of universes, and there is not a one where he is not masturbating. Like he is absolutely just. I mean that that's ex- I mean it's what it looked like to me to where I just turned him sideways and kind of giggled to myself for about five minutes. Again, not proud of it, but it <laughs> happened. So <laughs> I, I appreciate your honest vulnerability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean he does kind of like I think it's supposed to be almost like a neutral, uh, like an idle animation in like a fighting game. Kind yeah. of like a one foot back, like hands sort of at the ready. Um, but it's not. It's one foot back a little and hands moving back and forth down by his hips. So, yeah, I mean, my brain didn't go there. But at the same time, like, I can't really refute your interpretation. <laughs> um, do you have anything else for visuals? No, I don't. And uh, I'm going to grab the first comment of audio, which is, the audio has the music has the exact same problem that the uh, visuals have, which is they're really samey at first, right? So this game, you spend most of your time in the tower. There's essentially a single light motif that is reused every time the theming on the, the visuals changes. So every five floors or whatever we said it was, um, that's cool. But that means that every time you first enter the tower, it's the same music. And honestly, I actually, I love this song. Like, I like the music in this game a lot. Like, I think it's really good. But the cool thing that they do is as you get closer to the top of the tower and the world gets progressively scarier and more dire and there's more things that can, like, one-shot you and, like, cripple your familiars and separate you from your familiars and things are getting harder and harder, the song... Uh, sometimes it goes on some floors it's in a minor key so it's like kind of foreboding and creepy they slow it way down they take instruments out they put other weirder instruments in like it's it's actually really well executed but just like the visuals on the higher floors are really interesting uh not everybody's going to get to hear this and honestly the thing that made me really appreciate it was watching the speed run because every like three minutes the song changed because he'd gone up enough floors again and so you got to hear the melody slowly like descend into like terrifying madness over a period of like 15 or 20 minutes which is pretty damn cool but if you were just doing a normal playthrough a run that gets you all the way to the top of the tower could take 45 minutes an hour longer way longer like depending on what kind of player you are so you're not as likely to even notice that that's happening, let alone get to feel the full effect of it. What you're way more likely to notice is, holy shit, this is so repetitive. And that's 
unfortunate. Like it's there's something thoughtful there that should be appreciated, but most people are probably not going to get to appreciate it. Yes, no, and, and I certainly didn't get to appreciate it um, because I did not get get very far in this game. Um, so you 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 know how um, a lot of the times I, I just kind of phone it in on the audio. You know, like it's not. <laughs> is this not that time? It, no, this is this is worse. Oh no! <laughs> so few notes for audio. Um, <laughs> it just I don't know, man. It just didn't didn't really make a huge impression on me, just because I was dealing with a lot of the mechanical stuff that was. Like to me, the the audio was just a high pitched tinnitus squeal in my ear as I was dealing <laughs> with some of the mechanical problems that I was struggling with. So, um, since I didn't do this during my nostalgia portion, uh, I'm going to go ahead and insert it here just so I have something I, to, to discuss. Um, which is that this is one of those games where you get to name your character, right? Oh no! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and and so. I named my character Yu Ho, um, which which tickled me because that led to many uh, very engaging sentences that the characters would say to me, uh, some of which I would like to share for you now, um, which was, listen, Yu Ho, a man must take good care of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and that, was, that was good. And then... Um, Hey, you ho, where are you going? And I was like, ah, that's good. That's good. That, that, that makes sense. Right. This is, uh, Azure dreams, the spike Lee cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the other one was just like, it would have been, you know, like co, right. was his name or, you know, or if you named it Mike, like link, it would have been like link. No. Right. Totally innocuous sentence. And even with my, my addition, it wasn't that great. Cause it was just you ho. No. Right. So that's, that's fine. But the way I read it tickled me because it was like, you ho, no. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only way I heard it. And, and that, that's why I saved that one for last. So that's what um, I listened to instead of the audio. Um, do you have other like meaningful notes for audio? <laughs> uh, I mean, anything we say, it's meaning is debatable, but. Anything we say is more meaningful than what I just said. So. <laughs> well, fair enough. Um yeah, so I'll, I'll bring I'll bring some like critique back to your honestly really funny story because uh, I have something to say about the translation later that uh, <laughs> you picking a joke name for your character would have actually made my feelings about the translation very different. So that that'll be interesting to to maybe circle back on. Um, I wanted to call out the sound effects because. Um, a lot of times, and I mean a lot of times, like an overwhelming number of times, I think both of us are kind of like, it has sounds, they're fine, yeah. right? Yeah. And they're they're not they're not good, they're not bad. It's just, like they're doing their job of mostly being like plumbing, where yeah. you only really notice when they're not working and they're a problem. Um, I actually, and and part of this may be because I've been uh, playing games so much more with headphones on, um, particularly when I'm streaming. Uh, but the sound effects in this game are like really bombastic. Like they have a fair amount of like kind of bass and punch, but they walk this very thin line of somehow not coming across as silly with the exception being the jump noise. The jump noise is like a very Mario like whoop. Um, that one's pretty cartoony, but like, when you hit something with like a melee attack or if you get hit by a melee attack, it's a big, heavy, like boom. And they support it with the visual because it like zooms in just a little bit, like when the hit happens and then it pops back out. So like you, you get this kind of jarring visual that's supported by this like bombastic attack. Uh, the magic spells have some, again, like kind of almost cartoony bombastic, like, like the magic gathering and then like a big like swooshy fire noise or like a wind cutting noise or like a big splashy ice water noise or whatever and like i just i i was legit impressed like somehow none of these feel full on looney tunes and yet everything feels like oversaturated and it that's that's a tough like you know, line to balance on where you don't fall into, oh, everything is so cartoony and ridiculous that it never feels serious or that you don't, you're not so afraid of falling into cartoony that you dial it down to 
they were operating at or near expectations. Like saying we want them to be over the top and we want them to have a lot of punch, but we don't want them to be Looney Tunes. Yeah. yeah, We don't want it to feel like, Oh, the next monster I fight is going to be Daffy duck. Like that's, that's too much. And I don't know exactly what qualities make something straddle that line successfully, but like, you can feel it in your brain and your heart, right? <laughs> like you just, every time you land like a heavy hit and when you land a critical, it's like the extra like kaboom. It just it feels good. Like the sounds feel good. I think it's probably like that. That would be the TLDR. Like they hit. feel, they feel right for the art the, style, the, for what's happening on screen. The sounds enhance game feel. Yeah. It feels good. Yeah. No. And, 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 and again, for me, the, the, the sound effects were, were mostly plumbing. Um, I, yeah, I just, I could not focus on any of that because I was just struggling. So like, it, it, it's kind of like saying, you know, um, Hey, there's, there's a, a, a very, very nice dessert that I'm serving you that has this very, very distinct, it's a little bit bitter, but it's also a little bit sweet. And they kind of have this like pas de deux of, you know, like dancing upon the tongue, you know, and this great thing but there's also like this air horn going off <laughs> in the distance that is is saying you know and, and is giving you really weird information it's like the air horn goes off and then says you know like warning warning you must wear flippers on your hands warning and you're like what do i why what hang on and then somebody's like but what do you think of the dessert and it's like oh my god that's right i ate a dessert this game had sound effects you know like it's uh that's kind of where i was at with it if you don't have anything else for audio i think that would be a good segue into uh oh yeah no we're we're not going to top flippers on your hands so yeah, controls yeah. and mechanics controls and mechanics um so i don't think that you can talk about any of the controls and mechanics without first discussing this game's onboarding program <laughs> um <laughs> also known as the tutorial right Oh man, uh, I want to start calling it that at work. You know, like, <laughs> like people, that's the problem, man, is people should stop referring to their onboarding programs and start referring to their tutorials. Um, yeah, so this, oh my God, this game has a tutorial, technically. It, it is so perfectly wrong. It is almost, it, it is an amazing exemplar, not of poor conveyance, like Jekyll and Hyde, where it's like you, you kind of know what it is that you're trying to do based off of where everything's laid out and where the tower is and kind of where the game funnels you to. So it's not poor conveyance, but man, it, it, you could write a masterclass on how not to do tutorial. And it would be like this. One of the main thing, one of the more insidious things that it does though, that I think is actually clever in its awfulness is that one is the tutorial is 99% text based. It's just bodies on bodies. Yeah, very on little bodies doing. Of, yeah, very little doing all like, and it doesn't say like, now you can do thing A, now go do thing A. Um, so the two insidious things is one, there's no gating mechanics, right? So the game developer just relies on the fact that you got it, you know, like they don't ever test the fact that you got it. So therefore you could not got it and get through very vast chunks of the game. So no gating mechanics paired with the fact that the entire tutorial is bodies of text that is right behind an ungodly long exposition dump, right? So you have just gotten bored. If, if I wanted to read a book, I'd read a book. Um, so, so you're just like reading a book. They, again, they, they're, they're telling you, not showing you. It's like, hey, first there was your father and he did a thing and then you were around and then this other thing happened and then this other thing happened. You're like, all right, I got it. I got it. Fine. Just let me let me experience some of the emotions of these things as opposed to just telling me that all this stuff happened, that you fell into the nest full of gundarks. No, let me see Obi-Wan and, and, and Ben uh, or, and, uh, and Anakin like be friends. Don't just tell me that they were friends. Right. So after all of that, they're like, okay, now it's time for the tour tutorial. I'm like, Oh, thank God I get to go do stuff. It's like, well, sort of, we're going to make you read a whole lot more. I'm like, I'm already done reading. I'll figure it out. Which honestly in many games works for you, right? If they say like, here's a big body of text for the tutorial and you're like, yeah, whatever, I'll just figure it out, right? That is not an option in this game, and there is no way to un that. So, <laughs> well, and okay, so 
I'm realizing as you are saying this, that not only is everything you're saying a hundred percent correct, and there's no arguing with any of it, regardless of what any of our (laughs) listeners believe is what is so uniquely broken about the tutorial in this game is exactly like the game itself. There's some issues with the translation. There's some issues with the controls. There's some issues with the mechanics. There's some issues with the way they choose to deliver it with you. And none of those things individually are catastrophic, but their powers combined form a mighty bad tutorial. And the game is, it's not a dating sim, but it has dating mechanics. It's not a full monster razor like Pokemon, but it has like monster raising mechanics. It's not a full city builder, but it has city, right? So it's like the game is a bunch of shallow mechanics that are hopefully interacting in interesting ways. And the tutorial breaks, not because of any, like the engine didn't fall out, but it's like, oh, one of the tires is kind of going flat and also we're low on gas. And also I don't know how to drive. And also like it's really dark and the lights are out, right? So it's like any of these things individually we could probably deal with, right? And and I want to share a story with you. One of our listeners sometimes uh, plays through some of the games we play, uh, which is truly awesome. Anyone who ever wants to do that, like, please like play through the game. You can see on uh, uh, nostalgia goggles audio, like the upcoming games, like play along, like share feedback ahead of recording um, that that's awesome when people do that. Uh, so this listener was playing through um, and they died during the tutorial because the tutorial allows that to happen. And if you are, I died during the tutorial. Yeah. Right. And, and the thing is, um, they give you some gimmies like, Oh, here's some like crappy equipment. Here's some like low level monsters. And like the tutorial is kind of scripted. That's the very next time you go into the tower is not scripted. You're into full on roguelite territory. And because this person did not understand the controls or the mechanics or really even kind of what the objective was because of the translation issues, like they just ended up hard quitting out of the game because they were like, I can't, I can't do anything. And, and I don't know how to start to rectify this problem. And I'm now so angry that I refuse to delete my save and start a new save file. So like that, that's bad like that's a bad tutorial if the possible end result of your tutorial is my save is now dead like it's the (laughs) tutorial your save shouldn't be able to die during the tutorial um and actually interestingly every single thing you just said happened to me with the exception of quitting simply because i had to do this like literally the only (laughs) thing that are you making me do this yeah, no, but I mean, like, the only reason why I came back in was because I'm like, I, I, I have to review this episode. So I didn't redo it. I just kind of slowly pieced together. But yeah, basically, I died during the tutorial. So I was like, okay. So I popped back up in bed and I'm like, all right, well, that was weird. Um, but surely I've kept some of my stuff. No. Um, so I just went right back into the dungeon. But I was like, okay, so since I died, obviously, during the tutorial, they'll just rerun the tutorial for me, which, and I'll pay more attention this time. Nope. So the the gimme monster that you had, like he's not there. He's back at your house in a back room that you have to kind of figure out is back there. Um, and so I just went into the dungeon. I'm like, oh, I don't have a monster this time. Well, that'll be fine. I'll just level up. You know, nope, that's not how that works. And so I, I was just completely lost. And uh, and yeah, it, it and, and to your point, I agree completely, which is that um it, it is a, a, uh, a panoply of, of terrible things, right? It all just kind of comes together in this, this beautiful muse mosaic of, 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 <laughs> of broken, t- of broken. Right. <laughs> um, it, it, Which is funny. And, Cause you know, mosaic made out of like broken, broken yeah. glass or broken tiles. And it's like, Oh, each individual thing only has a small break, but it, they come together to make a huge broken thing. <laughs> I'm just picturing where it's just kind of like you're, you're, you're zoomed way in on the mosaic and you're like, yes, but if I zoom out, it'll all come together. And you just keep zooming out and zooming out. And it's just more <laughs> broken glass, you know, it's like, but eventually it'll be a picture right now. Nah, just nope. <laughs> um, anyways. Uh, so yeah. So again, just not to spend the whole time complaining about this one thing, but yeah. So, so then for me, it, 
a game like this where, like you said, it's got dating some mechanics, it's got roguelike mechanics, it's got Pokemon mechanics, it's got city builder mechanics, it's got, there is a lot of game to this game. Man, you have got to have a good tutorial for it. And they didn't. So because of that, when you said like, man, you had to put a lot of time into this game, like there's mechanics I'm still figuring out. I was like, I don't, I, I never will because I'm going to have to now, as opposed to being given, um, you know, given this console, what I've been given is a giant, you know, 10 by 10 by 10 plot of dirt and a, <laughs> a, a, a fossil dusting brush and was told to go find the console so I can then go play this game. Um, so to your point, right, where, where it's, it's, it's like it does a lot of things, none of them well, right? The immediate quote I thought was um, Bender, where it's like, I've been pursuing your fortified wine list and I've selected the 71 Hobo's Delight, the 57 Chateau Parte, and the 66 Thunder Chevets. Exquisite choices, sir. And mix them all together in a big jug. You know, like that, <laughs> I think is kind of this game. In a nutshell, mechanically, yeah. Right? I mean, if if I had to pick a single thing, like let's say for some reason you have a monkey's paw, and the one thing you can wish for is fix a single part of Azure Dreams, I would probably actually go for the translation because mm. they do dump a huge amount of exposition on you. They do dump a huge amount of the mechanics on you via text and. That means clarity is paramount. So, for example, some things that are in this game that aged horribly are weird face button combinations. So, mm -hmm. like, when you want to advance time in the dungeon, when you're moving, you just hold circle and then you press in the direction you're moving. But if you want to... um turn in place like a monster is coming and i want to turn and face them but i don't want to advance time this is like one of the few movements they'll let you do that doesn't advance time you hold triangle and circle in place to advance time but just triangle to change direction so you have the Did not know that yeah, and they do explain it to you in a single poorly translated sentence that if you miss, it's just gone like tears in rain, right? So like <laughs> you can move at super speed using circle. You can stand still and advance time at normal speed with triangle and circle, and you can turn in place with just triangle. So like you can kind of see they were going for this like almost like an adjective noun sort of thing is like oh well circle is the time advancing button so think of that when you want to advance time and it's like okay but can you like maybe elaborate a little bit or like maybe give me some safe padded rooms to experiment with controlling time right like help give me a safe environment to play with these complicated mechanics not because the mechanics are too complicated but because you didn't give me a safe environment to learn them in right right and this, these translation issues are pervasive throughout, not just the tutorial, but through the entire narrative. And nowhere is it more hilarious to me than if you do any of the dating mechanics, you spend a lot of time talking to the other characters in town because that's that's pretty much all dating is in this game is like talk to them enough times, maybe give them some stuff. Um, just like in real life. Just like in real life. So... I don't speak Japanese, but from watching, it's, 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 it's fun. Oh, it's pretty, to oh speak okay. It. Yeah. Okay. So when, when you, when I, when I say this, you can confirm this for me if this is right yes. since, since you are fluent in Japanese. So absolutely. Yeah. In uh, English, we use pronouns in a lot of ways in a lot of lazy ways. Right. But if you're talking to someone unless you're about to fire them or break up with them, you usually don't say their name directly to their face, right? Right now I'm talking to you and I don't say, but the thing about that, George, George, the thing about that, right? Because that's, it, it's weird in English, but there are other mm -hmm. languages in which that is totally fine. For example, in Japanese, you typically use someone's last name when you're being like more formal or more polite, there's a bunch of honorifics that don't translate into English at all. So they, those just all go straight in the garbage. Right. But what happens is 
whoever translated this or probably the small team that translated this didn't totally understand the differences between Japanese nouns and pronouns and English nouns and pronouns. And so what you end up with is sentences back to back that read like this. Can you believe George donated all the money for this temple? He must be a great guy. And it's like, oh, okay, I get it. This person doesn't know that I'm George, but once I'm more famous, then everyone in town will know who I am. But then you go talk to your childhood best friend, who is literally part of the opening cutscene, who says, I can't believe George is such a jerk. Why did you do that? And it's like, th- to a native English speaker, that hits the ear so wrong, so mm-hmm. wrong that you spend a lot of mental bandwidth just parsing that sentence. And it's like, does she not know she's talking to me? Oh, okay. She does know she's talking to me. Now imagine a floating Pikachu trying to explain the insane button combinations, but all of your mental energy is going into parsing pronouns. Like (laughs) that's not, (laughs) that's not, you're not going to have a good time. Like it's really bad. Like, I don't know. I must've had this game explained to me. A, a human being, my childhood friend, must have explained this to me because I can't imagine I I parsed this out on my own. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, I, I I agree with you completely. In fact, one of the things that I said to um somebody a while back, which is I was like, if you ever want to speak down to somebody, simply put their name in the middle of a sentence, which is it's just kind of if I said like you know, here's the thing, I don't think we're going to be able to do that, you know. If I said, here's the thing, Lions, I don't think we're going to be able to do that, right? It just completely changes the tone. And one of them, I'm just, you know, relaying information, maybe being a bit of a jerk. The other one, I, I am demeaning you, you know? It just, it's, so yeah, no, absolutely agree completely on that. Um, I think that uh, the, 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 the fact that somebody has to sit down and show and teach this game to you is to me, I, I agree completely, 100% cosign that. Um, I kind of have a note that I think kind of links into that, which is that this, for me personally, right? Um, the gameplay itself, the combat, right? So this this is a predominantly combat centric game, right? There's it, but it's like strategy combat. It is. Um, it's it's strategy combat, but especially in the beginning, it's just like from my seat because of the garbage tutorial, I was like, I don't know, walk up and wail on the thing. Right. Um, I'm sure it gets more complicated uh, as you go on, but you know, and then it's like, you know, Oh, well, depending on where you place your Pikachu and where, like how you tell it to attack and like a million other things, again, all buried behind this obscure wall and that you're not allowed to really toy around with it. And then clearly see cause and effect. I mean, Minecraft dumps you into the middle of nowhere to just kind of, play the game right but it'll kind of tell you like hey try combining these things hey check this out you know uh all that kind of stuff so i i say all that to say that to me the gameplay itself the combat isn't very fun um and the reason why i mentioned that is if you find it fun then that's then that's great but to me i think the main draw of this game as is in many rpgs is the stuff right so it's not it's leveling up it's upgrading the town it's the brain reward that you get for getting money that you can then exchange to upgrade the town from talking to the person whatever right which is to say that from my seat at least it's an extrinsic reward system right where you're not you're not playing the game because the game's fun to play you're playing the game so that way the numbers go higher you can get higher in the dungeon you can get higher level whatever right you're playing it for the stuff the game gives you not because the game is inherently fun to play and for me personally that is something i have very little tolerance in my life for these days you know yeah and i would i would argue that if a person found the combat system fun then it's some intrinsic rewards and some yeah. extrinsic oh, yeah. rewards the problem is i think it is unlikely a person would find the combat system purely fun and rewarding because let, let's put aside that. Like, let's just pretend you understood exactly how all the mechanics worked, right? You understand how 
you get to give your your familiar direct commands and what it means for them to be in different levels of aggression and different positions around you where they try and stay like in front of you or behind you or to the side or where like are they supporting you with magic or are you having them attack directly and some of the higher level monsters have like other weird powers like they can cause status effects and they have ranged attacks and stuff so like let's just pretend for a second you understood all of that right the game doesn't put you into i think interesting enough situations where understanding those mechanics is required most of the time you can get away with just bashing their skulls in and you which means get, you can optimize the fun out of the game well not only can you optimize the fun out of a game i would argue it's even worse you can optimize the fun out of the game to about the 50 percent mark You can get about halfway through the tower Mm. without really understanding, oh, I can command my familiar to use their special spell that they'll never use on their own. I have to tell them to do it. Or, oh, I have these ranged attacks. Or, oh, did you you probably didn't even realize because they explain it in a single sentence of poorly translated dialogue. But this the combat in this game is rock, paper, scissors. So every familiar has either air, wind water or fire as their element and it super matters i'm talking like 0.5 to 1 to like 2x in terms of damage dealt and less damage received so and there are ways you can modify what their their um genus i think is the term they use for it their what their genus is by like feeding them seeds that change their element and again even if you understood all of this deeply, you can get about 50% of the way through the game without having to understand all of that. So your your point about gating mechanics, like that comes back to screw you again after you've put 10, 15 hours into the game because only at that point would you realize like, you know, there's 40 floors in the tower and I haven't been able to get past the mid 20s on like many subsequent attempts even though my familiar is going up in levels, even though I'm getting progressively better and better equipment, I still can't really get past like the mid twenties. And I don't know why. And it's because you have to eventually dig deep on all of those mechanics. So either you wasted a monkey's paw wish where you somehow have intimate knowledge of all these systems and you execute on them. And maybe you find that fun or maybe you don't, or you bang your head against it until you either bounce off the game like you almost did like one of our listeners absolutely did and like probably a lot of people do or you somehow you know carve the statue of david out of the marble with your forehead smashing it repeatedly (laughs) into the marble and that's not good right like that's that it's not good that the the poor tutorial like pays dividends right Mm -hmm. like like that poor tutorial is like a nega investment where it, it, it makes the early part of the game less fun and it goes on to potentially make the end of the game inaccessible. Right. And I think that, um, to, to, the, the, the term that I believe describes what you're, what you're hitting on is, um, first order optimal strategy. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, where basically it's, it's the, you know, you can just walk up and bash everything. It's the E Honda, Honda hundred hand slap, you know, (laughs) Like that's going to win for a while, but then if you don't, it, but then it will, it will lose all the time. Like once, when somebody hits a certain skill level, it stops working forever, you know? So it's good to have a first order optimal strategy that like gets people kind of comfortable with the game, but then you need to ease them out of using it, you know? And I don't think that the game ever does that. Also, I just got it. I'm I'm just a little okay. So this is this is completely a, a pet peeve and a little tangential. I hate um, meaningless science babble. You know, <laughs> I do because it's it's dumb. You know, because I mean the thing that for me from my seat right is that video games have an amazing ability for tangential learning. Right, I've been playing Civilization Six now for the better part of like a year and a half. Right, and honestly there are things that i now can regular regularly and cleanly quote from very famous historical figures simply because i've heard it so many times and and you know it again like is it 
wildly important knowledge? No, but I mean, at the same point in time, you know, knowing that Winston Churchill said, you know, no matter how brilliant the strategy, one should occasionally check the results. Like that's something that I say to people, you know, they're like, oh yeah, that's kind of a cool quote, right? Um, But it would be like that. But if somebody said, yeah, you know how uh, Malcolm X said, you know, like no matter how brilliant the strategy, you, you should probably check the result. And it's like, cool. And then I quote that and somebody said, Malcolm X never said, why would you think that he said that, right? I say that to say changing your genus, that's just dumb. You know, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> it's such a weird thing to complain about, but like, you know, you could say changing your element, changing your, you know, type, changing your anything, but it's like changing your genus. It's like, it, cause genus is before species. So like it, it's, it, that, that'd be a pretty quantum friggin' shift in what this thing looked like, <laughs> behaved like, and could do. You know, um, yeah. I imagine it would be painful and maybe it is, but I'm just saying <laughs> that it's not why use that word, you know? I, I when, mean, well, you know, the God awful translation strikes again. Like yeah. There's because who, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if in Japanese it is element. Yeah. And then they were like, yeah, but it's, it's, it's genius. I, anyways, I, again, more so I was, I don't think that this was deliberate or anything like that. I'm just more so using it as a soap soapbox for whenever ever somebody says, you know, we need to travel at relativistic speed so we can go back in time. Like, no, not even. I mean, <laughs> no, that's not now. It's not. It's just not necessary. You know, like just it's if you're using science magic, it then, then make it magic. You know, like just like Star Wars hits that elegantly where it's like we're going to use the hyperdrive to go into hyperspace. And it's like, cool. So you're just basically bamfing from place to place. It's super, it's great. Star Trek, on the other hand, says like, okay, we're going to try to actually do good by the science. But then when they're not, they do make it up. Subspace is not a thing. You know, so they're like, subspace is our magic. Whenever we need to clutch something, we're going to use subspace. If we're going to use a real word, it's going to be the real thing. So all that being said, like whenever I hear somebody say something dumb, I'm like, that's not, (laughs) nope, nope, dislike. (laughs) Uh, do you have any other any other big heavy hitting notes? I've got um, just basically the uh, uh, extrinsic reward system and, and how it's kind of like Skinner box esque. The only other throwaway note I have is um, there's some ludo narrative dissonance in the fact that you know when when you know your your father died in like this place, but then when you die in the place, you still get kicked back to your house. You know, um, oh, um there is a sort of explanation like that there's i believe you (laughs) yeah not not everybody who goes into the tower dies permanently except the hero who has plot armor like there Mm -hmm. there is i don't remember exactly how they explain it in universe but there is a like a big bad who murder house him and and so he he died under like non-standard tower conditions and the one other question that I had for you, because you you definitely got to put more hours into this one than I did. Do they ever explain that the mom is the save point? Uh, I don't that- think so. I think you just have to talk to your mom <laughs> and actually go through a dialogue tree, which is, um, I need you to do me a favor. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> No, no, didn't didn't know any of that. Literally had to look up a tutorial that I saw that and I was like, oh, I mean, this I mean, it, it, uh, honestly, it's it's the science quest of friggin trying to untangle this video, right? You know, but it's just like, oh, I guess that. Yeah, I mean, definitely some games do that where it's like, oh, yeah, you talk to this person and the, and they chronicle your adventure. And that's your safe. Point. I mean, like, yeah, if you want to do what, what, what is that called again? The. um, uh diegetic oh, saving yeah. system yeah you like know? I, write your write your adventure into the journal yeah like download your mind into the computer or whatever dumb thing you know that that, that saves the game like fine whatever i you know i always my favorite one was always uh borderlands the way they handled that because they were so tongue-in-cheek about it are you clones uh yeah yeah you 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 <laughs> you get kicked back to the nearest like checkpoint and uh yeah it just immediately clones you and charges you for it yeah yeah and, so, and uh tries to give you like a uh psychological breakdown over it 
Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, because like, it always has like something cheeky. It's like uh, with my two favorites were always um, don't think about the fact that you are a genetic clone of your original self who died the first time that you used the new you system. Do not think about this. <laughs> that and the uh, <laughs> um, remember a hero dies a thousand deaths. A coward dies just one or something like that. <laughs> that's good that's a good uh that's a good like reversal yeah right i i really like that one because i'm like that's that's a kind of a deep cut because you have to know the original quote and like the meaning behind it but it's like no you're the hero so you'll die a thousand times but if you were a coward you just quit and go home yeah sad um i do i i, I do i think instead of uh re-explaining my uh kind of feelings more succinctly i will use this as my segue into whether or not i thought it held up which is I I have to give this game a nostalgia monocle because I really honestly and truly believe that if you fixed the translation and had really good tight explanation of what the hell is going on, that that would fix the majority of the, I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be doing problems because the tutorial is not good right? Like it's just not, but if they at least gave you the information, then maybe you could attempt to be successful instead of pushing buttons randomly, having to ask your friend or look it up on game facts. Right. So like this, this game, and I'm going to segue a little into like my personal feelings and not be as objective as possible. It's like, I want more games like act razor and like this to exist where instead of saying, we're going to take one or two mechanics and go super deep on them. We're going to take a bunch of mechanics and make them interact in kind of like a virtuous cycle, right? So the I think the core game loop, you could argue, is go into the tower, get money, use it to make the town better, get someone in town to fall in love with you, because once they fall in love with you, they give you stuff that you can bring into the tower with you, right? Because you can only go into the tower with five items. So then you go into the tower and you can do a little bit better because you have better monster and you have stuff from the person that you made fall in love with you. So like you go in, you get more money, make the town better. People like you more. They help you be more successful in the tower. So there's this like idea of a virtuous cycle where none of those individual mechanics are very deep. The monster raising is not very deep. Dating sims super not very deep. Uh, Combat strategy stuff inside the tower is like it's interesting, but it's not super deep right it's not freaking chess it's not starcraft even though everything looks like a chessboard right it's not super super deep but i like let's take a bunch of flavors that no one really thought to put together and see if we can make an interesting new dish from these disparate ingredients from disparate cultures right and and it's not great like it just <laughs> the dish you get at the other end of it is like, ah, maybe there's a reason these ingredients didn't go together. But I honestly, I really and truly believe that this game would move out of nostalgia monocle territory, at least for a certain kind of player, certainly for a player like me, if you just knew what the hell was going on and because of the translation and because of the way they choose to convey information, which is then magnified by the bad translation, You just, you either got to know or somebody's got to tell you or you got to look it up in an external source because the game won't teach you. So I I would, I know in my heart of hearts, this game probably deserves a full nostalgia goggles, but like I want more games like this to exist. So (laughs) game devs, nostalgia monocle, please do better. (laughs) That's fair. Um, For me, it's, it's, it's full on nostalgia goggles. This game is uh, um, chaotic, chaotic neutral, probably chaotic evil for me. Right. You know, it's, 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 um, but, but the thing is that, so to your point, I feel that to me, the, the poor translation and the poor, um, onboarding, the poor tutorial, um, kind of pushed me further into nostalgia goggles territory, just because it's like, there is an amazing party on the other side of, of the, in like your roommate's room, but you're like right outside of it, drinking warm beer and like a half eaten sandwich, you know, like <laughs> there's. <laughs> There's so much, so much to be done and so much exciting on the other side of the door. And you're like, can I, can I get in there? And they're like, no, 
figure out how to solve this Rubik's cube. Then you can come into the room and you're like, but I never had to do this before. And it's like, no, 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 it's fine. And then by the time you're done solving the Rubik's cube, you're so frustrated with it that you open the door and everyone's gone home for the evening. And, you know, there's just two people, you know, like playing beer pong, but they're both terrible at it. You know, you you Um, know what it is. You were invited to a party that sounded like it was going to have a little bit of everything but the directions were terrible. <laughs> so then you're just wandering around trying to find this party that everybody says is great. Yeah. It's like, where, where is it? And, you know, and, and then sometimes people will invite you to like, you know, to be on a team for a sport that doesn't even exist. I mean, I mean, come on, poop ball. I should have known. Um, <laughs> Turn anyway, left so- and go down 40 apples. What does that mean? <laughs> Well, my favorite one was the, uh, I forget who it was in your life that used to give uniquely bad directions where they'd say, take the second to last left. My grandmother. Yeah. 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 (laughs) I mean, to be fair, she never learned how to drive for historical reasons, but like you would think after being in cars enough times, she would have realized that that was horrible, but no second to last left or, or understanding like how time works, (laughs) you know, (laughs) maybe time worked differently for her. Uh, time worked differently back then um <laughs> in the good old uh, so, days so for me it i mean for me personally it's 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 full on nostalgia nostalgia goggles unless well there's there's one thing one thing that maybe could push in a nostalgia monocle hang on all right let's go play as your dreams the curtain falls the music plays the credits roll then it all fades to black and you're left by yourself the fanfare is gone there's no player two there by your side to share victories won but as you slowly progress down the hall to your bed a few great events leak back into your head From the time that you spent Traversing the land Battling evil Fighting the darkness Just sword in hand Your memories creep in With the edge of a smile